Okay, we now welcome on another special guest is a DC United and US men's national team winger. It's Paul Ariola. Thanks for joining us today, Paul. Yeah, no worries, guys. Thank you for having me. All right, Paul. So before we get into the interview portion, we like to start out with some quick hitting questions. Just one or two word, quick answers, rapid fire. All right. So <laughs> waffles or pancakes? Ooh, waffles. Thoughts on mumbo sauce and which is better, that or Old Bay seasoning? Oh, I don't even know what mumbo sauce is. No, because no, we I'm put out to... we we put out something in the in a DC United Reddit, and everyone was asking about mumbo sauce. I guess it's like a DC native type sauce. I don't know. I've I'd never heard oh, of it. God, but everybody was asking. Dude, about people it. are gonna people are gonna kill me for not knowing what that is. Yeah, that's a bad uh, I'll luck. Just say Old Bay. I'll just say <laughs> Old Bay for that. <laughs> mumbo sauce. It's a, a condiment developed developed and popularized in Washington DC takeout restaurants. I don't know what. Oh god! It's, well, you yeah, know what? For you live in Virginia, friends, so yeah. For all the for all the DC natives, I'll say mumbo sauce now. All right. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite tattoo you have? Ooh. Um, oh man, I uh, I just recently got a, a Budweiser truck on the back of my on the back of my back, so um, definitely that one. And why? Why is that your favorite? Uh, it's my favorite because that my dad passed away a couple years ago. Um, and he was a, he was a Budweiser driver, um, Anheuser-Busch driver for uh, about 20 years. Um, and you know, most of my tattoos are, are obviously either related to family or, or, you know, my Christianity. So, um, you know, it's just, it's just a nice, uh, you know, memorabilia and, and obviously a reminder of, of my dad. Nice. So you own two pugs. We got a little cameo from them before we started recording. Is one of them a bigger troublemaker slash, do you have a favorite of the two? Oh, uh, troublemaker! Yeah, we have a, a black a black pug, Penelope, and a, and a fawn pug, Nugget. Um, Penelope is like uh, she's just crazy. She just she just ruins everything. She's super smart. She's super alert. Uh, and favorite, I I no, I don't have a favorite. I mean, of course, like you know, there's certain things about them that are your favorite compared to the other. But um, no, I, I love them equally. It's like picking between children. You can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. What are you currently listening to? Whether it's like music, podcast, audiobook, anything like that. Ooh, um, lately, I've been I've been into like you know like top hip hop, you know like the recent hip hop um, hits. I love country. You know, depending on the day, especially now like summer's coming around, it's like you got to listen to some country on like a mm-hmm. nice hot day with the windows down. Love that. Um, yeah, those are my, those are my two right now that I'm that I'm big on. Nice. Do you have a favorite outdoor activity to do in the DMV? golf 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 what are you shooting golf oh i'm shooting i'm shooting way too high i'm shooting, <laughs> I'm shooting way too high no um i uh i just I, you know i played golf for a little while now but i'm just like i've just been so into it lately you know like so locked in i think after my acl it's just like just I, it's just like the competitiveness and like wanting to get out there when you can't get it out there when you're you know when you're trying to rehab a, a, a huge injury so like right now i'm just like i just been on the grind as, as many times as i can um I'm not, I'm not the greatest, you know, but I definitely go out there, have a good time, have a few good shots. Um, and yeah, it's, it, it's great. Have, have you ever been to top golf? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's, there's one, um, right here, you know, in the, in the same city, uh, that I live in. So that's kind of, I got, I started to get my girlfriend into golf. Uh, yeah. and so, so that's where, you know, if anyone comes to visit us, we'll go over there. If my girlfriend and Kayla and I want to go golfing, we'll go jump on top golf and, you know, obviously have some drinks, have, yeah. have, some, have some good appetizer, and just chillax. Yeah, I went there. I went two weeks ago, and I was so surprised at how like techno technological it was. Like it tra- the way it tracks your ball, it's pretty crazy. It's scary, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So you mentioned your your injury and your rehab and everything. You just came back from injury, and you won man of the match in your first match back. How did it feel to be back on the field uh, with your team? Yeah, it felt great. Um, you know, obviously, like this was this was my my first start. Um, for DC United since, um, you know, pre, pre ACL injury. Um, and it's special, obviously it's, it, it was a little more special because, you know, there's fans back in the stadium, um, you know, especially at home, it's, it, you know, it was great. Um, you know, they definitely, fans definitely give you the extra push. And I, and I think all athletes can appreciate, you know, getting fans back into the stadium, cheering you on. Um, but you know, it, it was good. Obviously the result wasn't what we wanted. Um, but, but the bigger picture for me was kind of getting back into it, obviously played, uh, a little more than 60 minutes, which, which I'm happy with. And obviously it's, it's, it's a good, it's a good uh, point to, to start building on. 
Mm-hmm. What's it like playing in an empty stadium? Is the intensity different to the game? Like, is there, do you feel like having fans back now, it's just a little bit more, there's like a little bit more of an edge to it? Yeah, I, I absolutely. You know, I only got to play last year. I only got to play one game, um, which was the last game of the season for us. Um, and it was at home. It, there was no one there, obviously. Um, it was, it was the weirdest thing as an athlete that, that, you know, that you can, I mean, you think about it, even as a youth, as a youth kid, you have people, you know, you have your, even if it's 20 people on the sideline, you still have people there, you know, like, yeah. There's still people cheering you on, you know, people that people to support you. And, uh, you know, really there was, there was really no one there. So it was definitely weird. I think it, there's definitely a, there's definitely, there's definitely a different type of feel, a different type of energy um, that you feel when, when there's fans. Yeah. So with you then coming back from your injury, um, I know new coach at DC Losada, he's more um, on like the physical fitness side. He wants people to be very physical fit. That's the way he plays. Was it coming back from the injury? Was it, did you have to get to a higher level of your physical fitness than really what you thought? Yeah, it's, it's, um, you know, it's been an interesting process, uh, to be honest with you. Like I, I've really been lately. I, one, I've really been on the move, um, you know, since, since I've, since I've came back from my ACL, which was last November, um, you know, I, I was with the national team for a couple camps. I went to Swansea for, uh, you know, a month and a half, two months. Um, and then I come back to a new head coach here in DC. Um, and, uh, you know, during, during the, my ACL, uh, rehab process, it's like you you go through this phase where you're not running a lot and it's just a lot of working out, right? Like you, you almost like, you almost like fight your battle in the gym against yourself every day. Like, can I push more weight? Can I get stronger? Like all these different things, right? Um, lower body and upper body, you know, you, you, you really try and be as strong as you can to protect, uh, you know, your muscles, your ligaments, your tendons, everything, uh, um, you know, that, that, that helps you be an athlete. Um, and then kind of when I got back to DC this year, it's like, Hey, like, you know, we gotta, we gotta focus more on running rather than, than, than actual lifting the muscles. Um, so it has, it has been an interesting process, you know, and, and I think I can, I can, you know, vouch for, for all the players on my team that, that it's been a little bit different. It, it's obviously, there's a different type of intensity to it. Um, there's obviously a lot of running, um, and, and I, and I think as a club, we're still trying to find the right balance of, 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 you know, the, the physical fitness part during the week leading up to games along with, you know, making sure that you're maintaining your, your muscle mass and your, your lifting and, and things like that. So um, overall, it's definitely been an interesting process, but I think uh, day by day, you know, week by week as a club, um, you know, with communication and understanding how everything works, we're, we're kind of all getting better. Uh huh. Has on to, go further has there been a change in the diet that is expected of you at dc now yeah i mean the the, i think the biggest change now is is that you know we weigh in we weigh in twice a week um and you and you have your you have your set preferred weight right your ideal weight um and obviously like with the understanding of you can kind of fluctuate up and down depending on uh water water weight Mm -hmm. um but overall like that you know we have a fine system uh, if you're over, you know, you can't be, you can't be coming in on, on an off day and, and weighing four or five pounds over, uh, what your ideal weight is, you know? Um, so, you know, in the end, it's, it's just kind of a bit of accountability, you know? And, and, um, you know, I think it, I, obviously I think it's really good for the younger guys that they're, they're really forcing, they're really forcing the younger guys who maybe don't have a lot of experience. They don't understand, uh, um, how important diet is. Um, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely changing and they, we obviously have a, uh, a dietitian, a, a nutritionist who, who's available, um, you know, for us, if, if we want to, if we want to use her, but, um, you know, as of right now, the, the diet is kind of on your own, but, um, you know, they've definitely, they've definitely tried to provide sort of things for us. Um, you know, and in the end, it obviously helps your career. Mm-hmm. So how do you feel like you fit into the new system that DC United has? Like, do you think it suits your play style? Well, are you liking it just overall? How are you feeling with it? Yeah, the, uh, yeah, our, our new system at DC obviously is for, you know, not just about the formation, but, but the, but the, but the way that we want to play the intensity that we play at, um, you know, I think, I think it's ideal for, you know, for, for a player like myself, um, who's naturally a little more intense, a, a high energy wants to get, you know, wants to get, just want to get all over the place and, and create havoc defensively and offensively. Um, so I've been really happy with that so far. I think, um, you know, not only that, but you've also, I've, I've also been able to see differences in, in other players, um, you know, that, that, that the coaching 
Seth is pushing to kind of be that type of intense player on and off the ball, um, which is nice because you get a bunch of guys like that and all, these, all, all of a sudden, uh, you know, you, you guys aren't so fun to play against because all you guys want to do is press and run and, and, and you know, be, be trouble. Um, and, that, you know, as, as position-wise, I think we're still trying to figure it out. You know, I've played two games so far. The first game, um, the, both of the games being, la you know, a couple weeks ago last week, um, and, you know, I've only had my first start. So I think there's kind of a question on, um, you know, where, where, where should I play? Uh, where do I play? Do I play as a winger? You know, the last game we played with two nines instead of, you know, two wingers and one nine. Um, so, you know, that formation is a little different. So I'm not quite sure exactly where, um, you know, they prefer me to play. I think they know that I'm, that, that preferably I'd be up top as one of the wingers. Um, you know, especially in a high press and turnover and stuff like that. But um, last game I started as a right wing back and in the second half, I kind of went into a free roll uh, underneath underneath the two nines as a 10. So um, I'm kind of all over the place, obviously, like, you know, throughout my career, I've kind of been like this, uh, you know, Swiss army knife uh, that's been used in, di in different positions, which I'm okay with that. But obviously I think my goal and, and, and a lot of attackers goal is to be as, as close, as close to the goal as possible, create as many chances mm -hmm. as you can get assists, get a goals, um, you know, and, and help your team win. So, you know, as long as, as long as I could do that, you know, forget about the position, I'll be happy. Awesome. So when you score your first goal this year, do you have your celebration planned out yet? Oh man, I've got, I've got so many, I've got so many different celebrations. Like <laughs> I'm not, I don't even know, you know, like um, one of my buddies who, who lives in the DMV area, his, his uh, younger brother who I've known for, you know, since, since we were young kids, he's like, huge into baseball you know so he taught me like a baseball celebration you know like I know that like I always kind of do some wings um you know when I score for DC United um and in the past couple times I've I played with the national team I haven't when I scored I haven't really celebrated you know like I just kind of am, am in kind of like this uh I wouldn't say shock but just kind of like you know cool and and, and calm and collective you know yeah. just kind of hanging out uh so, so let's I'm not do it again <laughs> let's score so, again yeah, yeah exactly Exactly. So I'm not quite sure um, what it's going to be. I have some ideas, but I think in the moment, you know, it's just going to be hopefully as long as it's not as long as it's not too dumb, I'll be all right. Do you have a favorite celebration that you've done throughout your career? Oh, man. Um, no, I mean, I, I, I like the wings, you know, I, I like to do I like to, you know, flap the wings a little bit, obviously, like as a player, you want to show personality, you want to, you know, you always want to have something that's kind of your own. Um, and, and I feel like, you know, a couple of years ago when I started, you know, to score some goals that just kind of would happen naturally. And it's like, oh, this is me, you know, like, I love this. This is what I'm looking for. So I kind of, I kind of like to stick with that and, um, you know, keep going with it. Hopefully. Are, are you a knee slide guy? Have you ever done that? Uh, you know what? I did one in, um, I did one in a January camp, um, in man, now I can't even remember 2019, I think it was. Uh, I, I tried to do a knee slide. It was awful. And I just like ended up on my, I ended up on my butt somehow, like sitting there. I'm like, dude, I'm not, I'm not doing, this. especially after an ACL, like there's no chance you're going to, you're going to see me do a knee yeah, slide. I might like, yeah. I might do like a full slide, like in the second base type slide. But beside that, yeah, no, yeah, I, I, we, I'm really, I'm really sketch about it now. And we've had um, Cole Bass and John Lewis and they both have done the knee slides and they both failed and they were both kind of, or John was more clowning on Cole for failing on his, but he was like, Oh, I failed on mine. So I can't really like be saying that much. Yeah. It's That's harder than it looks right. apparently. Yeah. Dude, I, I'm not, I, I, I'm the last person now that's going to be going for that. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. I actually did hit a knee slide in my Sunday league game the other day. Cause it was pouring rain. So I had to do it just for the, for the, for the laughs. And it was successful. <laughs> I have to say it was pretty successful on a bad field. So I don't know how these guys are messing it up on these like, pristine pitches there's like not a dirt patch there's no bumps nothing it's just perfectly did, smooth did you hit a couple of little hills on the way or what As not, yeah a little through? bit a little rough on the knees that's what i'm saying i feel well i feel like on that field you might hit a rock and just like yeah, cut your done. knee open or something like there's <laughs> like why why would you even try that no straight sub man straight sub <laughs> yeah um so you kind of mentioned this earlier you from January till now, you've been under three different coaches. So really kind of how do you manage that? Um, I'm sure it's like three different play styles, three different expectations. How do you just manage um, having like three different bosses? Yeah, it's it's 
obviously it's interesting. Um, you know, you, you, you have three different, three different coaches, three different real styles. Um, you know, obviously you have different teammates as well. The, you know, the good thing about, you know, being a part of the national team is, is we've really created this culture and the system in the national team, the way that, you know, that there, there's a real belief in, in what you're doing. And since I've been a part of the, you know, I've been a part of the Greg Berhalter era since um, day one, you know, I have a really good idea and an understanding of, of what's asked of me when I get into a role with the national team, you know, whenever that is. Um, and, and so for that, that, you know, that's easy. And obviously Greg is a great coach and he's, he's helped me a lot uh, learn, learn and see the game differently than, than I, than I have had ever done before. Um, and then obviously in Swansea, I went, um, you know, under, under Steve Cooper, who, um, you know, is, is a well-known, is a, is a well-known coach for, you know, being part of the U17, uh, English national team, um, you know, a few years back and his style was definitely different and, and, you know, not just his style, but the championship style compared to, um, you know, any other league is also very interesting. It's a different league. It's, it's, it, you know, it, it's one that, that physically is very demanding. Um, and then not only that, then I obviously go to Losada and, and he's a brand new coach, uh, same teammates, but brand new coach that, that is asking different things as well. So, um, you know, you, you really just try and stay true to yourself and, and understand what the coaches are asking, asking of you. Um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, if, if you're not one of the most talented players on the field naturally, um, which there's very few of those, there's very, you know, few of those around the world, um, you know, the best way to, to improve your game is to understand what the coach is asking of you uh, and, and do it on the field, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and to be able to, to adapt and, and really execute the plan that, that is being asked of you. So, you know, that's kind of my goal, especially when I get into a new coach. Um, and, and a new system is, is to understand what's being asked of me, what I need to improve on uh, and what I need, you know, what I need to keep doing. So that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at now, obviously with, with Hernan and, and, and DC United. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you kind of go take the extra step to go out of your way and talk to them, like kind of have one-on-one -on -one sessions and really go and watch like film or what really is it that kind of. Yeah. When, yeah. When I got, when I got to Swansea, um, you know, the first thing I did was say, Hey, like, you know, I, I would love to watch some film. I want to watch some film. I want to know exactly, you know, um, the way that the team plays and where I kind of fit in and where, you know, I need to be looking at when we're watching video and when we're, when we're talking about different things, like understanding terms, everyone has different terms, um, you know, on the field. So, you know, that, that's a huge, that's a huge thing for me. Um, and then I come back to, to DC and, and, and I have to do the same, you know, you, you, you really have to learn each position um and kind of what's being asked of each position that therefore when you're on the field you know you have a clear you have a clear understanding of what's you know where you need to move you know when you're supposed to go you know into space or or come to feet different things like that so uh, it's definitely something that I personally do you know I, I I you know I can't speak for anyone else but um you know for for someone like me who who is a workhorse and who someone you know takes a lot of pride in, in working hard it's it's one of those things that, that, you know, it, it's, it's necessary for me to do. Yeah. So before we started recording, obviously we talked about the young talent coming out of DC. And of course the national team also has countless young players coming through. Uh, obviously you're not old, you're 26. We had a similar conversation with Sebastian Legette where it's like, you guys are in your mid to late twenties. You're not old, but you are some of the older people comparatively to guys like Moses, uh, Kevin Griffin, Yao. So do you see yourself taking more of like a, a leadership role and a mentorship role for these young guys? And second part of the question would be, did you have a mentor when you were their age that helped you uh, get to where you are? Yeah, I, you know, I, I definitely, um, I, I, I definitely try and, and, and mentor as much as I can to the, to the younger guys. Um, you know, I, I, I think the, the, the best way for me to do that is, is, is to, to give my input without overstepping, you know, like, uh, especially with Griffin and Kevin who are, um, you know, a, a little, that play a little wider than Moses, you know, and, and that's also something that I think I'm not going to be telling a center back what to do or a number nine, how to score goals, because that's, those, those aren't the positions that I play, you know, um, but with Kevin and Griffin, uh, I, I definitely try and just give them the best advice, um, and I, and I think they have loads of talent. If, if I look at where, where they're, where they're at and their type of talent compared to where I was, 
when I was 17, 18 years old, I think, I think the sky is the limit for them. And, and obviously I want them to reach their full potential and be rewarded for it. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just try and give them, you know, simple, but, but, but easy advice, you know? Um, and I remember when I was younger, you know, I was in, I was in Mexico, I was playing for Tijuana and luckily there was a lot of Americans there. Um, so, you know, the, the guys like Greg Garza, uh, Hercules Gomez was a huge mentor for me. Um, both, of, both of those guys were, were, you know, Joe Corona also, you know, the, these guys who obviously spoke both languages and, and at the moment I, I didn't speak a lot of Spanish and for them to be able to help me, because I do remember like when you're younger, you tend to, you know, you tend to, it's easy to, to blame the young guy when, when there's mistakes or if there's anything else going on, like it, it's really easy to, to do something like that. So um, I remember, you know, always getting down on myself and, and thinking after a game because I got yelled at and, I would, you know, at times you'd be scared to grab the ball and, and, and just play and be yourself, show, show who you are, you know? So, um, you know, I don't know if it's because I still feel young and I remember those days like they were yesterday and, and therefore like I, I feel the emotion and I know what they go through and I see, you know, when they put their head down or when they make a bad cross and all of a sudden now they lose confidence, they don't want to do it. Like, you know, for me, the, the best thing is just to give them the confidence, remind them, you know, that they can do it, that, that they're allowed to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, because the only way that, 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 you know, any player really is going to grow is, is by, you know, allowing themselves to make mistakes, throw themselves out there, make mistakes, and then work on them and get them better. Um, because if you never try, you're never, you're never going to, you're never going to grow to your full potential. Are you fluent in Spanish now, by the way, since you spent what, three or four years down in Mexico? Yeah, I was there. I was there four years. Um, I'm pretty, I'm, I wouldn't say completely fluent, but I definitely, I, you know, I, I mean, I can obviously hold, hold a conversation with everybody I can, you know, but there's, there's definitely words that, you know, sometimes I hear, and I'm like, uh, uh, like, can you tell me another way? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but, um, but yeah, I, I just kind of picked it up when I was there and I had a lot of Americans, like I said, that that were able to translate right away for me. You know, if, if I heard something, I didn't know what it was. I'd say, hey, like, what did what did that mean? They mm -hmm. say the sentence again and then I was able to pick it up. So, um, you know, that's kind of something that, that's cool now for me. Do you hang out with Kevin or like any of those guys off the field ever? Um, yeah, you know, one time I had one time Griffin came over to my house um, which is kind of weird in a way because my, my younger brother, well, I only have one brother, but my younger brother is like, I don't know if he's the same age or a little bit older than Griffin. And I'm like, my girlfriend's like, isn't it weird? Like this young kid is like coming to hang out, you know? I'm like, oh man, that is kind of weird. But like, you don't see it like that. You know, you see it as teammates. Kevin actually was just giving me rides into training. Um, I had one of my cars in California. Oh, did he just get his race. license or something and wanted to be driving <laughs> around? Or... <laughs> yeah, don't. Yeah, uh, I had to stop that real quick. I wasn't. I, I had to stop jumping in the car with Kevin. Um, but he lives. He lives out close close to me. So uh -huh. uh, I told him for about a week to take me in to take me into training. Uh, and I, I after the first day, I couldn't even look up anymore. I, I just had to stay on my phone, make sure I wasn't looking at the road. And as long as I got to the stadium, I'd be all right. <laughs> this guy kevin <laughs> you buy you got you, uh, excuse me do you buy those guys beer and stuff like that to uh because they're underage <laughs> no chance in exchange for rides <laughs> no absolutely not i don't i don't give i don't give them anything but some wise wise words. just just some confidence yeah that's <laughs> right that's some right. advice um yeah but so um was there anybody that you kind of oh yeah you kind of mentioned that that was the guys on the um the in tijuana but for you on the U.S. national team, are you – who are some of the guys that you're kind of closer with talking to of the younger – that would be kind of considered younger? Yeah. Um, obviously, like, you know, I've been – it, it's been – actually, when, I, when you think about it, it's been, it, it's been an interesting process, right? Like, I was part of the national team. Um, you know, I, I've been a part of youth national teams my really my whole life, under 14, all the way up. I played in the 17 World Cup, the 20 World Cup um so like obviously the guys that are my age it, it, you know it's easy to connect to you know mm -hmm. uh you know kellen kellen acosta yeah um, we had him on too oh really yeah yeah, yeah. Kellen, kellen's great what a, a great guy he is i've known him you know forever uh zach stefan i've been around zach you know since we were under 14 i mean uh -huh. there's we some, also had him you on. Know, <laughs> there, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of like the like the 95s you know the 1995 year years that 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 
that have been really successful, you know, and, and a part of the national team, which is extremely cool. Um, but, you know, in the beginning, I was, I was really close to Kellen. I was really close to Christian Pulisic, you know, at the time um, when I had just kind of hopped onto the national team scene, it was really just us three for the most part that were the younger guys. Um, you know, it, it was during the, you know, the Jurgen and the, and the Bruce arena times that, that, you know, there was a lot of older veteran players. Um, and then once we didn't qualify for the world cup, then it became the, you know, the new transition of, you know, let's get younger guys in. Um, and so it's kind of been cool. It's kind of been cool to, to, to see that and, and how crazy it is to, you know, nothing changes about you. Um, but all of a sudden the younger guys come in and now you become a, a huge veteran and, and, and a guy with experience, you know, like, and I think, I think that's a really interesting piece, but, um, usually, usually, usually I'm, I'm, I'm closer obviously to the MLS guys because uh, I'm in MLS and, and you see them week in and week out all the time. Um, so I don't really have someone that I'm like too close to on the national team. Uh, obviously Sebastian Lejet is, 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 is a great friend. He's a, he's a great guy. Um, and, um, yeah, yeah, that, you know, that, that's, yeah, I, I don't really have someone that I'm like really, really, really close to, um, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, it's kind of weird that you kind of live through like that transition of like back in 2017 and then till now, which is weird. And then all of a sudden you're like one of the younger guys and then kind of not like overnight, but kind of overnight, you're like one of the older guys with more experience on the team. So yeah it's it, it it is it is it is weird um but obviously you have to embrace it you know you have to embrace it and and, and you know you have to be you have to become a guy you know on and off the field that 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 other people can can lean on you know that that the coaching staff can lean on that the other players can lean on you know like when you talk about you know starting world cup qualifying you start to think well who's played in world cup qualifying before you know like a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of people underestimate how hard it is to go to Honduras, you know, or Panama or Mexico city, like, like these places where, um, you know, the team is going to have to go. I mean, it, they're, they're hostile environments. It's tough to play. Um, and obviously like, you know, CONCACAF is CONCACAF and, and people will always have their thoughts about, um, you know, the, the bigger teams and, and why is it so difficult to get results here and there. But, um, you know, it, it, it really, it really is a, a, a tough competition, especially with other teams getting better. Yeah, we had Heath Pierce on a little bit. He's a little bit older. Yeah. Um, but he was kind of talking about the hostile environments. And he was – I don't know if he said it on our podcast, but I definitely remember hearing him saying it on another one. But he said he got, like, bags of, like, pee thrown on him and, like, things like that. I think that <laughs> I think that's what he said was in Honduras. Like, it, it sounds pretty uh, yeah. pretty hostile. <laughs> no, it's, it's crazy. Like, you'll have, you know, someone pull the fire alarm – you know, in the middle of the night when you're in another country, you know, and make, make the whole hotel evacuate or uh, people will light up fireworks outside of the, out of the hotel, you know, out of the hotel and, and wake you up and not let you go to sleep. Um, you know, and then, and then also, you, you know, there's, there's pitches that you show up and the grass is this thick, you know, you step down, you can't, you can't really see your boots. Um, so, I mean, everything plays a factor and, and, you know, it, it, that's just kind of what it is, you know, it kind of makes it, kind of makes it fun and it kind of makes it interesting and 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 obviously for us it's you know for for the guys who have been in world cup qualifying i think it's a, it, it's obviously a, an experience that we take with us hopefully into this next round of of qualifiers to know you know what to expect and, and how you need to go about you know each and every game so obviously there's a lot of uh, competitions coming up for the national team throughout the summer and into the fall and the winter do you have your eyes set on one specific uh, competition for this summer, whether it be gold cup or nation's league? No. Yeah. I think, you know, obviously I don't, I don't have my eyes specifically set on, on, on any competition. You know, I want to be a part of the national team as much as I can. And, and whenever I'm, you know, whenever I'm called upon, um, you know, that, that's the, that's the most important thing for me. And, and, and it's, you know, it's not about kind of when you get called up, it's just about what you do when you are called up. Um, and, and that's kind of the way that, that I've seen it. Um, and at the same time, what, you know, the, the thing that excites me even more is the players that we have. Uh, you know, I, I think all the players that are developing, uh, you know, extremely well in Europe and the younger guys in MLS guys who are really pushing for, for spots and making it difficult to, to make the national team is, is, is the healthy competition that, that we need as a country to, to, to perform at the highest level, uh, you know, which is obviously the world cup for us. So, 
you know, that that's something that really makes me excited, you know, makes me excited that pushes me every day to, to, to be a part of squads. Mm -hmm. Um, in about a week, I, I think, wait, when's the, whenever the champions league final is, there's going to be two Americans that could potentially win. Who, who are you, who are you rooting for Zach or Christian? Oh, I won't have any, I won't have anyone to, <laughs> so I, I definitely, I definitely will. I'm going to root for both of them. I don't, you know, I, when it, when it comes to stuff like that, like, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, when Polisic is out there, you know, you obviously want Polisic to, to do the best and, and, and to show um, how great he is because he really is, he really is an amazing player. And then, you know, Zach obviously is an amazing goalkeeper. So um, I think the harder, the, the question that I wouldn't be able to answer is if, if Zach was in goal and Christian was taking a penalty kick or something like that, like, what do you want to happen? You know what I mean? Like, that's definitely like that is literally like I, I just got to watch at that point. I can't, I can't choose a side. Ideal scenario, 3-3 three, three draw, pool stick hat trick, and then Stefan comes in for penalties and saves the winning penalty. Or there you go. saves a couple there penalties and they lose, whatever. There, there <laughs> they both go. have a good performance. That's what we need. That's right. We'll take that. Yeah. Wait, when, when exactly? Is that game a week from today? Is it the 27th? I think it's, I th I think it's May 29th. Yeah, it's last week. I think oh, it's May. Saturday then, huh? Yeah, yeah Saturday, May yeah, 29th. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Cool. I'm excited for that. That'll be awesome. My money's yeah. on Chelsea, yeah. underdogs. Um, well, kind of what we were – so then backing up a little bit, um, you're talking about a lot of young players coming up in the MLS. I mean, obviously there's a few on D.C. that we mentioned. Who are some players that we should have our eyes on besides the guys on D.C.? Maybe that you've seen past year or just recently. Yeah, I think, you know, it depends on how young you want to go. I mean, you know, we've been a part of, we've been, you know, I've been a part of camps like January camp this year was obviously um, kind of split in half with a lot of the younger guys for Olympic qualifying. Um, Julian Araujo, I think, you know, is, is one of my favorites as a player um, who, who I've been in a couple of camps with him. Obviously, Kate Cowell, I think everyone knows, you know, oh, yeah. and, and has seen how great he's been this year already who was also in camp and, and you can see the quality that he has um you know i think he's still 17 years old which is mm -hmm. unbelievable you it's hard to it's hard to think that this guy's looking like that at 17 years old and, and <laughs> what he's able to do on the field already um and and, and also also i think obviously Caden clark i think everyone's also have you know has, has an eye on him um i haven't i haven't seen him you know too closely um but then you can go obviously a little bit older like i love jackson you i think uh jacko is is amazing he's a great six he you know he, he's really found his groove um you know under almeida and, and along with the national team i think he's been great um but yeah I, I mean i really think you can go down the line and find you know a guy a, a young guy almost on any team um mm -hmm. you know that 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 has that has been really good or, or shown potential um but i think those guys are, are kind of my favorites right now yeah, I saw Kate, uh, Kate Cowell play like three weeks ago when they played um, Dallas, and he really impressed me. And I was like, the whole time I was like, this guy's 17 years old. Has wow. anybody ever actually seen his birth certificate? Because I kind of don't – I'm not buying his 17th <laughs> thing. He's a grown know. man. I don't know. He is a grown man. We, we Also, we are having Julian on the podcast later tonight. Do you have any questions we should, uh, should ask him or like anything we could uh, bring up? um it's all good uh, if I mean, not. Yeah. He, he's he's a jokester so just bring bring something good for him he <laughs> he loves a good laugh he's a, he's a he's a great kid he, he's a he's a really really good kid and yeah um, he's been playing really well recently yeah. as well so yeah he's been great i mean he has he has so much potential um and, and obviously when you know when he's able to do things like he did the past week with with the early cross assist uh, to Chicharito, I mean things like that. I, you know, he this guy's a limit for him as well. Yeah. Uh, so, like we mentioned earlier, a lot of competitions coming up for the U.S. What does a successful summer for them look like? Is it winning Gold Cup and Nations League, one of the two, or making it to the final? Just in general, what does a successful summer look like? Yeah, I think you know, for me and 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 in my opinion, I think it's winning both Nations League and Gold Cup. Um, you know, I don't, I don't see any reason why we can't, um, as, as a country and, and with the players that we have, regardless of, um, you know, obviously I'm not the coach. I don't know how, what, you know, what it looks like, you know, for the, for the roster for nations league or the roster for, 
uh, the gold cup, you know, and, and, but, but I think the talent that we have is, is amazing. And, and the experience that all the young guys have, you know, there's no reason for us not to be able to, to go and, and, and win nations league, um, which would, which would be a, an achievement itself. But I think, um, you know, to, to talk about a, a successful summer, uh, is winning, is winning both nations league and gold cup. I agree. At yeah. least one, at least one of the two. Yeah, yeah, anything yeah. less has got to be considered a failure. But I think it's definitely attainable to win both with the amount of depth that the U.S. has right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Absolutely. No Absolutely. question. Yeah. So this question, um, you can pass on it if you want, but um, is there a general consensus on within like the U.S. national team on who the worst person to have a ro- have, who the worst person to have as a roommate is? Like somebody that's really yeah. dirty or just like – and no you know what like snores a lot like no you know we uh, to be honest i haven't heard any we at least me I, me personally i have not heard heard anything bad really about anybody um, maybe it's you no i'm joking maybe it is <laughs> me. maybe it is me <laughs> no um no i think i think every i think everyone is everyone is good and and also i think because the the culture is so tight you know that the, the, the staff do such a good job at, at making sure everyone is, is is connected one way or another. So, you know, you really feel comfortable with, all, you know, all the guys. It's almost like, it's almost like a, you, you get the vibe that it's like a, it's, it's a club team. It's someone that even though you see, you know, maybe once a month or once every three months at some point, or, you know, you're out and you don't come back for, you know, six months. It's like one of those things that once you, once you're back in, it's like hanging out with your friends, you're going to go to camp with your, mm-hmm. with your buddies, you know? Um, which is something that, that, that I, I didn't, I hadn't experienced before, um, you know, but, but that's credit to obviously the national team and, and the way that they run everything. Do you have a perennial roommate that you've kind of stuck with or do they like kind of assign it at not random, but they kind of assign it to you and you're kind of stuck with whoever you get? Yeah, no, usually, usually it's um, for the most part I was with, or I've been with Jackson Yule. Um, yeah, Jacko is, Jacko is usually the guy that, that I room, that I room with. Um, before that I was with, uh, Tyler Boyd. Um, and then, man, you, I can't even think past that. I, I, <laughs> those are like, those are like the two, but yeah, main, mainly Jackson Yule is, is, is kind of the guy that, that, that I'm always, that I'm always around. Is that by choice or do they assign that? Um, I think I think the first I think the first time, um, we were we were we were together, and then after that, it's just like yeah, just keep us together, you know, no problem. Right. Um, yeah, that I mean, you know, that's nice. It's a, it's a, it's familiar. You kind of know about the person. You don't have to worry about the snoring issues and <laughs> you know this and that. So yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um. So I'm kind of curious, just in DC or like. Like when you're just walking around, have you ever seen anybody on the street wearing a Paul Areola jersey? Um, oh man, you know I see. I think it was. Uh, I think it was two years ago, 2019. I showed up to the stadium. Um, just coming around the stadium, there was a lot of people that that I saw with Areola jerseys. And then uh, after like the first game or something like that, like my girlfriend came up to me. She's like, man there was a lot of sevens out there today, you know, like there's a lot, like we, she's like, I never really seen that before. Um, but like actually out, out, uh, not that I can remember, not that I can remember. And, and I definitely would have probably tapped him on the, on the back. Yeah. Said, like, nice like, or something like that. If, yeah, yeah. 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 If you, if you see like somebody in a DC jersey, are you kind of waiting for them to walk by to like, see if, uh, See if you're on the back or no, no man. No, I <laughs> no, I usually don't. I remember, I remember one time. Um, quick story about Wayne Rooney when he was when he was there when he was here after after a, a game away. We we just there was a few of us. We just went out to a bar just to have a drink. Um, and there was a guy wearing a Man United jersey at the bar, literally at the bar. And um, we were sitting at like a small little, ta- you know, like one of those bar tables. Um, and Wayne goes up to, to, you know, get us drinks or whatever. And he starts ordering, but we're watching the guy the entire time. Um, and he's kind of watching the TV and he kind of looks over and he takes a glance at him. And then he kind of looks back 
And then he looks again real fast and he's like, oh my gosh, like freaks <laughs> out. And it's like, man, what are the odds, you know? Like, yeah. You got to be having a night if, if you're able to see that. So that, that's kind of like, that that's that's something that's really funny, but uh, yeah. kind of like related to the, to the jersey thing. Yeah, that's probably a story that guy's going to be telling the rest of his life. He's like, I was wearing Man United and then Wayne Rooney was just there. Wayne Rooney (laughs) walks in the bar. No one believes him. No one (laughs) There's no chance. No picture. No one will believe him. Yeah. Is Rooney Rooney a good time out? Um, Yeah, yeah, he is, but he's not, um, he's not crazy, you know, which is, which is nice, you know, like you'll get. Obviously, a lot of crazy guys who who just want to party and go and go and go. And Wayne is Wayne was never like that. You know, he was he was always calm. He was always you know kind of collected and and you know he he wanted to have a good time, but but have a good time, you know, among amongst you know the, the teammates really. You know, just kind of mm-hmm. hang out vibe. Shoot, sorry. Um, yeah, just he just wanted to hang out vibe. Um, and and kind of that's that's that was kind of him. Yeah, none of that like craziness, like clubbing or anything like that. You know? No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Like, no. He he was he was he was cool. He was a he yeah. was a great guy and 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 obviously a great player. I prefer I prefer more like, look like I I probably would enjoy a night out with Wayne Rooney than rather just going out to a random club with like thousands of other people. Oh yeah. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. He probably has some good stories too. I imagine, right? Like just yeah he's yeah he's got he's got he had he had a lot of amazing stories ones that like ones that just kind of wow you you know like when you, when he's talking about when he would talk about like locker room talk like you know at man united or you know sir alex ferguson you know like different things like that like yeah you know for the most part you just know him as wayne you know him as your teammate mm-hmm. you know what i mean but then if you you know if you really think about it you think about the level that he has played at and the level that he is at in the world, you know, recognition wise, then you think, Oh my God, like, yeah, this guy's, this guy's done it all, you know, but that was never kind of, that was never the vibe that he gave off. He never wanted to, he never put himself ahead of anybody or, you know, he was very, very uh, normal, um, which was probably the, the best thing about him. Mm-hmm. Is he, He's not still playing, is he? Cause I know he was like playing managing, right? No, he, um, this was his first um, full season, I believe, at, at Derby as the head coach. Uh-huh. Um, or maybe maybe he start maybe he I don't know if he started I don't know if he started the season um, as player and I think kind of like in October or something like that kind of took over full time as as the manager. But um, yeah, he was with he was with Derby this year, uh, yeah. fighting the, the relegation. Yeah, he didn't do too well. Has he been yeah, trying but- to uh, recruit you to come out and play for them? <laughs> um you know funny you asked that but he um we actually talked right before i went to swansea um as deadline day was was coming around it, he was he he reached out and 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 you know tried to get me to go over to derby instead of swansea hmm. um which i had no which i had no control over on huh. on on kind of what i do but but yeah it was kind of, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that because he uh he he did ask um you know and, and try and figure out a situation for me to get over there yeah, that would that, have been pretty sweet. Yeah. It would have definitely been interesting. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I kind of just have one more question, or it's more just, yeah, I guess a question. Um, I saw on Twitter, well, a podcast kind of that I follow is part of my take, and I saw that PFT commenter tweeted out a picture of you, uh, of him holding one of your jerseys. Did you send that to him? Like, Are you a fan of that show? Or No, no, you there? know, I – no, I had I had no clue, man. Uh, DC United, I guess, had, had had sent had sent him the jersey, um, sent him my jersey. You know, I, I had no clue what was going on. I literally just at the time just opened up my my Twitter when I'm scrolling through social media and, and had seen like there was a bunch of comments going around, like it, you know, it kind of in my mentions or whatever. I'm like, what is going on? Like, you know what I mean? Like, why is this happening? So I'm like scrolling down, scrolling down, see it. I'm like, shoot, well, first of all, I, I don't know who he is, you know? Yeah. Like I really didn't know who he was, but then um but then but then afterward I obviously clicked on him and 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 saw that he was a part of it. And then um I don't know if you know uh Big Big Cat. Yeah, Big Cat? yeah of course. Yeah, like I remember uh in 2019 at the Gold Cup, he had tweeted, he had tweeted uh he had tweeted something about me. Um 
And so was it I, good? I have, was it good or I not? Have, no, it's always about it's always about my last name, dude. It's always about the relation of like Ariola <laughs> to Ariola, you know. Like it's uh, always it's all it's always something like that. Like people just love it, you know. Yeah. Um. And, and so it was something like that. And uh, so I just I think I had responded just like laughing or something like that. So, um, yeah, those are those those two. Uh, oh, it's always about the areolas, dude. Yeah, they are. Yeah, uh, can never get away from it. The, their podcast is like the probably like the biggest sports podcast there is out there i'm pretty sure like they're 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 huge so they're awesome. you should uh you, sh- you should try and get on their show sometime because that's awesome man. I, 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 awesome. yeah i know um yeah you gotta talk to joanna get joanna working with <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, actually, also, uh, speaking of the areola thing this was another thing in our reddit or the uh, yeah do you know <laughs> that fans have given you the nickname Polly nips are you aware of that? Um, I dude, I've seen. Let me try and think of some names. I've I've heard of so many. I've heard of like, dude, like I've heard like, uh, like, like like Ariola took it took the ball off the Ariolas, you know? Like I've heard <laughs> I've heard so many, man. I'm just like, oh god, like these guys are everyone, you know? Let them let them say whatever they want, make up their own things, you know? Yeah. I get I guess I guess it's. Uh, I guess it's a good way to promote my name <laughs> one yeah. way. Well, we got yeah. that too. Our last name's Tishy and it sounds like Tissue, Tushy, like <laughs> we got all that stuff growing up. So Yeah. That's yeah, we, we've we've dealt with it growing up and even now too, to an extent, you know. <laughs> well, at least I know I'm not the only one. Yeah, you're, you're not alone. It makes me feel better. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah, so I think that's it. I mean, I'm I'm out of questions here, Will. Yeah, I'm all good too. Paul, thanks well, for joining us awesome. today, man. We we had no a lot worries. of fun. Enjoyed speaking yeah. with you. Yeah, I had a great time as well. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, and Appreciate good luck it. the rest of the season. We're we're we you're our front runner for uh the comeback player, the MLS comeback player of the year. So uh I we'll, love we'll, that. I love that. I'll 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 keep that in my heart. Keep that nice. in my heart for sure. <laughs> yeah. I uh, last thing to add too, um, just to, like on our like little Reddit thing. Um all the like DC United fans we we're, we're kind of giving you some like nice messages of how much uh they love you and how much they're happy to see you back out on the field so that's awesome yeah i love, love D- i love dc united fans man I'm, I'm an extremely loyal person um and so especially when i get onto the field like you know just seeing them you know obviously i try and try and give out as much as i can especially to the people that come and and, and spend their money and spend their time and spend their weekends you know to, to watch us play and, and you know they're definitely a they're definitely a motivating factor for me, um, you know, just to kind of give them uh, as much as I can and, and, you know, for the club and help, help everyone win.